What's up, YouTube? MW Perry 2009, aka Sexy Dream Pirate, coming to you live from Sexy. my luxurious living room. You almost fucked that one up. Almost. <laughs> um, uh, I'm here with the chaos. We are continuing our Evo Fury review. We got absolutely nothing to fucking do today, so we hope you yeah. enjoy. Yeah, we're going to be making <laughs> quite a few of these. Uh, so. We're moving on. We ju we did light on the previous video. Now we're gonna go ahead and do water. That's right. And if I got a treat for you, I don't know what it is. I don't but know. Maybe he'll show. We'll you. find out. <laughs> All right. The way we're doing this, in case you haven't watched the previous video, if this is the first one you're coming up on, the way we're doing this is we're sorting monsters first, spells last, and we're doing it by level. All right. Basically, it helps us stay a little bit more organized and. I don't know, frankly... That's how we do our deck profiles, and we're sticking to it. Fuck yeah, so, fuck you. Mean face. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Get to go and go in this and stop bullshitting. First off, what I got is a tap one for two, blocker skirmisher. No, he's blocker blocking. guard. Sorry, I'm a light guy, so sue me. We have Cyber Sprite. Yeah, good. I <laughs> fucked that one up. Alright. Pretty much how we do this is rate them on a scale of 1 to 5. 1 being fucking useless, 5 being must-have staple or must-have awesomeness. Alright, first off, for 1 for 2 blocker guard for water. The fact that he's 1 for 2 is awesome. Alright, the rating I'm giving for him is... Hmm, well actually I'm going to give it two ratings. First off, because there's two focuses a person can go on with a water deck, whether it be monochrome or not. Either you're focusing on cyber, uh, cyber lords... Or you're focusing on, uh, I think the majority of blocker and guards are trench hunters. Yeah, you got Refi, Floragill, yeah. Bazooka. All the big ones from... Right. All right. The fact guys. the fact of the matter... Actually, fuck you, I'm, gonna give, I'm, I'm giving this one rating, period. The fact that this guy is a cyber lord and he's a blocker guard for one for two is actually pretty damn uncommon. Because there is a card in the Water Civilization that gives a bump to all their cyber lords. What's his name? Finbar. Finbar. My idea, not his. <laughs> but that would give him, I think they give a thousand, right? Two. Two. Excellent. Okay, so Two. right there, he could be one for four, which is the equivalent of my monochrome deck, Thunder Cruiser, with Palladio being one for four. This guy right here, regardless of whatever type of deck you're running, I'm giving him a five star because he's one for two, blocker guard. Unfortunately, he can't attack, but that's fine. When you're blocking, the object is to destroy the creature without having to attack him in the first place. So, for me, this guy gets a five stars simply because he's a cyber lord that has blocker and guard, so he's able to get the bump, and regardless if you're doing a multi-civ or a monochrome, he's very effective. So I think if you're running any type of deck with water, this guy's a must-have. That took uh, forever for me to say. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say Cyber Sprite. Uh, I'm going to give him five stars as well. He's excellent Evo bait for Emperor Neuron, for Emperor Axon. He's one for two, so he's not lacking on power on the water side. Uh, I mean, and he did bring up an excellent point. He does get the Finbar Cyber Lord bump. This card is seeing a lot of play right now. It's good, you know, a turn one anti-rush, gets rid of Blaze Belcher. Uh, just crazy good all over the place. 11 Cyber Sprite, five stars. Almost dropped him. Alright, the second one we got up is Cyber Trader, another Cyber Lord. He is two for one. His effect is whenever he enters the battle zone, you can draw a card. And if you do, you discard a card. I fucking hate this shit. Me, personally, this guy's getting a two, two star rating. I would give him a one, but there is a point to his effect. Basically, go through your deck so you can get the card you're wanting to faster. Why you wouldn't just play Search the Depths or some shit like that is beyond me or logo scan or something like that. This guy can be replaced very easily, but if you're hell bent on searching through your deck, then you'll take him. So for me, two stars, but he's really damn close to getting a one. Uh Cyber Trader. Uh I don't hate him quite as much as the Chaos does. I think it's you know an interesting effect. They've had stuff similar to this in old DM. Uh, if you're not utilizing his effect, he's basically an aqua soldier, and that just can't do. Yeah. Um, but he is a turn two drop, he is a cyber lord, so if you're playing him as him, 
uh, then he does get the Finbar bump. And, and well, I suppose he, he's also evil. Though. Yeah, he's he's really good Evo Bay. Another turn two Cyber Trader, turn three uh, Neuron. So he's good at that. And in utilizing his effect, you can actually search out that Neuron. You know, maybe he's the next card you draw. If he's not, maybe he's the one after that. It's basically milling your own deck to get to the card that you need. If you've got a certain card that you just have to have by turn two, uh, you must be playing a god, because I don't know how you're losing that bad. But um, I, I'm not going to hate on the card. I've seen it played, and I've seen it you know, in testing, and it runs well. It doesn't. It is lacking a little in the power, and the effect is not so great, but it is useful. Uh, I'm going to rate Cyber Trader as three stars. Maybe, maybe three and a half. Alright. Alright, next up we have is Neuron's Oracle. This guy is a three for two Cyber Lord. So once again, Evo... Ba Sorry, I keep covering That's his okay. face, man. <laughs> Pay no attention! He's a three for two Cyber Lord, so he does get the bump. Also, that makes him Evo bait for a... Uh, uh, Neuron and Axon. Thank you. Alright. His effect is whenever he enters the battle zone, you look at the top card of each player's deck. I that okay that I like that effect better than the draw and discard one. Granted, that would be a bit situational. If you have if you have a shitty hand and there's something you can throw away anyway, okay, cool. But this guy's effect, um, it basically just allows you to see what's coming. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to prevent it. So you might hate life one turn ahead of what you're supposed to, but. Well, you know, there are certain advantages to seeing what, what what's coming. Um, for him, I'm going to give a rating of three stars. Uh, simply because he's more, I think he's more useful than Cyber Trader. Uh, he costs one more mana to hit, but at least this guy's at 2,000, so we can trade with the majority of monsters in Kaijudo. What's up? Go ahead. I'm, I'm trying to uh, figure out some... There he is. All right. Okay. No, that's not him. Care to share with the group? Because I don't know what you're doing. Well, I was looking to see if in Three Rise if there was something that was just three for two vanilla. I, I didn't find anything. Right. I don't think there is. All right. Well, so for me, this guy's getting three stars. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give him three stars as well. Uh, the effect is cool, don't get me wrong, and he's acceptable... Evo bait for Neuron if you have to, if you couldn't get Cyber Trader in, or if you couldn't get uh, Cyber, Cyber Sprite. Sprite in, then he is acceptable. Uh, I don't really see him seeing a lot of play. Mm -hmm. like, I'd much rather play Aqua Sinishaw. Yeah, you? yeah, I would much rather play Sinishaw. It only does so much good knowing the next card, because if you look at it, who knows, it may be crap that just gets charged into mana. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and rate this card two stars. I mean, the effect is different, it's interesting, but... ultimately but, ineffective. Yeah, ultimately, uh, I haven't seen anybody running this card, whether on YouTube or at League, so, yeah, ineffective, two stars for me. Okay. The only thing he's really got going for him is turn three, play him, turn four, Emperor Axon. That's all he's really got going for him. He does get the bump, but Seneschal is a lot better card to run on yeah. turn three. All right, next up, we have Reef Gladiator. He is a three for 3,000. He's a monochrome staple, meaning if you have all water cards in your mana zone, he, he gets an additional 3,000 power plus the effect of draw a card whenever this creature blocks. For me, this is, without a question, a five-star card. All right, right there, if you're running a monochrome water, which I believe would be, is, is possible. I'm pretty oh, sure yeah. a lot of people do it. Yeah, there's a lot of people doing it. If you do that, he's three for fucking six. Yeah. All right, light doesn't even have shit that blocks three for six. That, and whenever this guy blocks, you draw a card. So for me, hands down, this guy is a must-have staple in any... In any Monochrome water, fuck. Even if you just have a standard, even if you just have a multi sieve, this guy is still effective because he's three for three. Granted, you probably want Floragill or somebody, yeah. but still, five stars. Uh, I'm gonna agree. Reef Gladiator in a mono water. 
Uh, definitely going to say five stars. I, I know that's the point of the mono Civ cards, but, I mean, this card is, you know, in my opinion, could be the best mono Civ that we got. Uh, three I mean, for six yeah, in mono sieving, and the whole draw on this guy is just crazy. Um, granted, Comet Missile ruins the whole thing, <laughs> but um, I'm going to say in a mono sieve water, this card gets five stars. In a multi sieve, uh, I'm going to give him. I'm going to have to give him. Probably a three, actually. At, Three or maybe even a two because we have a better card already. If you're mono sieving, you do not want Reef Gladiator. You want four gill mana. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to say two stars if you're multi sieving. But if you're mono water and you don't have this card in your deck, I don't know how you're winning. I honestly don't. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those cards. Five stars most of the time. Is what I'm gonna say. I'll I'll agree with him then. Yeah, definitely makes a lot more sense. And the next one we have up is one of the all famous Evos. Do we not have Axon? Yeah, we've got Axon, but he's a four cost. Oh, there he is. Okay. All right, this one is Emperor Neuron. Everyone knows this guy. All right, he's three for five. Uh, he's an Evo. He's unblockable, and whenever he attacks, you draw a card. All right, for me, this dude. It's five stars. I mean, it's it's straight up. It's straight up like that. It doesn't matter. This guy, if I have three Grand Gears on there and they're all beefed up to fucking thirteen, fuck. If I have two Ravus, if two I have fucking, yeah, if I have every fucking most Ravu, powerful block on there, right. it, yeah, it, it it don't fucking matter because this guy can't be blocked. All right, for that, this guy gets five stars simply because he's awesome. Um. Three for five. Uh, as he said, he's a Cyberlord Evo, so he's got a bunch of bait out there. Cyber Traders, Cyber Sprite. Uh, you know, he's got some good bait out there. I don't know if they have two different two-drop <laughs> Cyberlords or not. Is there any others besides Cyber Sprite you can think of? Cyber Sprite's one. Or not Cyber Sprite, I meant the... Oh, uh, uh, it's uh, Trader? Yeah. I don't know. Either way, either way, um, by turn three, you've got, you know, you've had quite a quite a bit of time to come up with some kind of bait to get him out there. There's a lot of people playing him. It allows him to draw a card. Um, rather than five stars, I'm actually going to rate him a four. He is phenomenal, don't get me wrong, but I think he's been overhyped a bit. Um, yeah, you're drawing a card on turn three. Um, and it is true that he's unblockable, so late game, he can even be the one to swing for game. But he's affected by the cheap removal. He's not a uh, double breaker. I didn't even think uh, about that. Yeah, I mean, he's he's affected by the cheap removal. He's not a double breaker, so you're not breaking two shields. You're only going for one. Um, he doesn't have as much... He does have a lot of Evo bait, but he doesn't have as much as, you know, the fire side or even the nature side. Um, it, don't get me wrong, the card's totally playable, but I think it's a little bit overhyped. I'm going to say four stars. Uh, maybe if he had a little bit more power or something like that, not quite so much, but right now he's getting by. To he's getting hit by Tornado Flame, he's getting hit by Ice Blade, he's getting hit by a lot of He's actually of getting hit by anything except for Rock Bite and, and Heat Seekers. Seekers. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's a good card, but it's not as good. I don't think it's as good as what people are hyping it to be. So I'm going to say... Emperor Neuron, four stars. I'll actually agree with you on that one, man. I totally forgot about the no double record. Right, yeah. next, next one we have up is Silpon, the Cyber Renegade. He's hit batting at a four mana cost for 2,000 power. And, what is it, when he enters the battlefield? Yeah, when he enters the battle zone, you choose a shield and you look at it. Once again, this guy's effect is pretty much very similar to Neuron Oracle. Um, the only difference is instead of a, a instead of a deck, you're looking at the shield zone. Granted, granted, people do ch do choose what shields they're supposed to attack. Me and him don't. Just we just go from left to right and end it at that, just so we don't have to be anal retentive about it. So in that case, this guy would be a little bit more useful. 
All right, so for that, I'm actually going to give him. I'm actually going to give him three stars, because if you can avoid a terror pit or some shit like that, then why wouldn't you? Uh, he's four for two. He is a cyber lord, so he can get the Finbar bump. The effect is nice. Um, maybe, maybe if, uh, the, uh, what's that, the one that we just looked at, the other three drop that's uh, Neuron's or Oracle, it, yeah. you know, it's three for two and it allows you to look at, you know, basically top deck both cards. Um, I think if he was three for two, he'd be a little bit more useful, but, uh, I'm, as is, I'm going to rate this card three stars. It is nice if you can get a peek at a shield so you know the tear pit or the bone blades is coming. And, you know, uh, maybe if it's a tap card, you can time it to where your last shield that you break happens to be that one that's going to do no good. But uh, overall, I mean, only, only you know, maybe two or three times out of ten are you actually going to look at a shield and it actually be a trigger. Most of the time it's going to be a creature. So, um, uh, I'm going to say three stars for Sopon Cyber Renegade. And the next one we have up is in the other evil <clears throat> for Water Civilization. He's at the tap four for six, Double Breaker, Emperor Axon. All right, um, not much to be said. He's a Cyber Lord, obviously. Uh, for him, for him, I'll give him four stars. Uh, main reason for that being, I mean, he's swinging harder than the other one. He's four for six. But the fact of the matter is, he's still subject to termination for some of the lower cost destruction spells. Actually, mainly just Bone Blades. But the fact of that, you got Bone Blades, Terror Pit, Death Smoke, you got. That's it. Actually, pretty much this guy's a bitch to the Dark Sith. Well, um, destruction spells. You know, there's, there's also Root Trap. He gets hit with Return to Soil, but in those cases, you're sending two cards two to the Mana one. Zone yeah. instead of. Uh, Instead of just one, and when you're doing that, you're playing to water's advantage because when they start getting a lot of mana, you're in trouble. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. You got anything more to say about? Yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna say four stars as well. Uh, he's good for the. You know, there's a few uh, water fire rush decks out there that are being played. Even if you're not rushing, he's good to put some pressure on the field. Uh, he's a really good beat stick for water. He's got a lot of Evo bait out there. He gets the fin bar bump. He is a double breaker. Um, overall, I mean, yeah, you got. I like Emperor Axon. I like him a lot. I think more times than not, I think he's actually more useful than Emperor Neuron. If you can hold on to the Neuron till later game and get him in there, I think that's a little bit better than playing him on turn three. Um, you know, but, uh, overall I'm going to say Emperor Axon, four stars, almost five. Pretty good card all the way around. All right, this next one we have <clears throat> is a tap five for five. You guys know him as, uh, King Neptus. I had to look at the name because I kind of forgot. But his special effect is that he can't be the target of any spells or abilities. All right, basically this makes him immune to any sort of spell card or... Hell, even if someone were to bring out Hydro Medusa, they couldn't hit him. Alright, uh, just for the fact that this guy is really, um, he has the ability to evade a lot of shit, and he's 5 for 5, which is kind of uncommon in the water civilization. Very uncommon. Uh, but, um, he's 5 for 5, and he's unaffected by spells and abilities. Um, for that, I'll give him 4 stars. Uh, just simply because Leviathans don't really have a whole lot of place in a water deck at, at this point. Pretty much you're looking for Trench Hunters for the blocking ability and Cyber Lords for Evo Bait and Draw ability. Alright, so for me, King Neptus gets five, five stars. Uh, King Neptus gets four stars because he's useful. There isn't, he, he's not a waste of a card in any way, shape, or form. And pretty much it makes spells put their foot in their mouth. Uh, Assuming they have them. I. I was a little yeah, bit I'm gonna press. say that almost any any deck, especially if it's running a a lot of water cards, you know, a main ratio of water, you know, if you're dual sieving and you've got water, or maybe even three sieves, three sieves not so much, but most of the time, I'm gonna say this card is four stars, maybe even a five. 
with it being unaffected by... Actually, I'm going to say it's five, and I'll tell you why. With it being unaffected by spells and such, you know, no more tornado flame, no more... Uh, Terrapit, bone blades. Bone blades. Well, he's not enough fuel. Yeah, uh, some of the creatures that have, you know... Destruction. Yeah, and destruction and, and shit like that. Hydra Medusa. All of that, you know... Orion. Orion, yeah. You just took all of that out of your opponent's toolbox by running this card. Uh, he's a Leviathan, so you can run King Coral, and I, I believe, yeah, when King Coral... Basically, whenever you drop a, cre a Leviathan in and you've got King Coral down already, everything level 4 and lower goes back to their opponent's hands, so this plays off of that really well. Uh, this card, and the most important part, the reason I'm giving it 5 for 5 is because, or 5 stars, is because it is 5 costs for 5,000 and in effect. If you play uh, Hy Hydrobot Crad, you're looking at 5 costs for 4,000. You know, and all you gotta do is pick King, King Neptus over that, you're looking at 5 for 5, which... In water, does not happen. Simply does not happen. You know, that that's nature and fire territory swinging that hard. So that's crazy good. Uh, and like I said, I've seen some testing where Neptus has just been so hard to get rid of. I'm going to say five stars. Really liking it. They uh, they outdid themselves with that effect. I, I thought that was really cool. All right, okay. Next up, we have a tap five for four. Rapids Lurker versus uh, He's a blocker guard, and he has a little something something called a Lusu. Basically, that's any time he would be banished, he goes to your hand instead. All right. Um. I, me personally, I have faced him um, against both my light and my uh, fire darkness rush deck. At be, honestly, at first th at first glance, I didn't really think he'd be all that awesome, but he constantly kept playing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It got to the point where this guy maintained a constant presence on the battlefield at all times. Yeah, he was killed on every turn and back in on, yeah. you know, every summoning chance. Exactly. And for that, normally if, just because I experienced what this card can do, if it wasn't for that, I probably would rate him like a three, maybe a, maybe a four. But because I've actually experienced this, this guy is easily a four stars with a very strong, with a, Pretty much the possibility of being a five stars, depending on what my future experience shows me. Uh, I'm gonna agree with the four star rating. Uh, five costs for four thousand power, so it's expect. It has the power that is expected of a normal, you know, vanilla water attacker. But the elusive effect, you know, bouncing back into your hand over and over again. I in one. Duel, not a match, but in one duel, I saw the exact same copy of uh, Rapids Lurker get killed four times against his light deck. So this card really slows down a deck. It's um, really hard for, you know, rush decks to deal with because even if they Comet Missile it, it's back next turn. Uh, you can use it to chump block double breakers. There's, you know, a lot of options with this card, and all of them are good. Uh, I'm gonna say four stars, definitely, and as he said, you know, possibly five, depending on what comes out with Dragon Strike. But for now, four. Really good card. Alright, this next one, me and the pirate have actually discussed multiple times. This is one of those situational cards where if. If it pays off, then fuck yeah, this card's awesome, but if not, it'll fuck you over. It's kind of like playing Return to the Soil or Root Trap. Yeah. It gets rid of the problem right then and there, but, but it can come back and bite you in the fucking ass. Oh yeah. This guy is the tap 6 for 4, Forklift Tank, Blue Urgle. Alright, basically for those of you not familiar with this guy, um, I'll go ahead and just read the effect to you. I keep stepping on your fucking foot. <laughs> okay. Uh, for any, I'll just go ahead and read the whole card to you. Uh, whenever this creature attacks, you can have your opponent put the top card of his or her deck into their discard pile. And if that card turns out to be a creature, you return that card that he discarded and puts it into your opponent's hand. 
So there you go. You have effectively just fed your opponent's hand. Yeah, you just plus one him. Exactly. And if it's not, then that card goes into this. So basically, if it's not a spell, which nine times out of ten it, it, it won't be a spell. It go if it's not a spell, it goes into their hand. So by rule of odds, I would rate this card a two. I mean, he's at he's at a cost six and batting only at four thousand. So there's a lot of shit that can trade with him and beat the piss out of him. All right, I mean, if his effect, I mean, even if his effect works, unless it's like a terror pit or something big, something that uh, you would hold in your hand and wait for the duel to continue before you play it, then hell yeah, you just denied your person that pleasure. But as Pirate said, nine times out of ten. This guy's going to bite you in the fucking ass. So, for that, I'm giving him two stars. Uh, I'm, I know that we said that one is totally useless, and I'm sure that there's, you know, there's somebody out there running Forklift Tank Blue Urgle who's looking at us right now saying we're absolutely crazy, but I'm going to have to say this is a one-drop card. Or a, a one, one star. Sorry, a one star it card. One drop that changed the star level something. For yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I'm gonna say, I mean, this card is borderline completely useless. Should have never been put in print. It's six for four. Uh, there's a lot better. Just this is a very rare. There's rares out there that are better to put in with six mana. There are you know, com commons that are better to put in. I'd rather drop. Two cyber sprites than one forklift. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna say like this thing. This card's lacking in power. It's not a double breaker. Um, it is a cyber lord, so it gets the fin bar bump, which could put it as six for six. Six for six, but it's still not a double breaker. Uh, it comes in way too late to be acceptable evo bait, so it's crap there. Um, and the effect, whenever he attacks. Now, I'm going to read it again just so you guys realize how bad this is. When he attacks, you basically your opponent top decks and puts it in his discard pile. Now, if it's a creature, he picks it up. So, you know, most people run 10 spells. I'm going to say as like an average number, around yeah. 10 spells. So, about 25% of the time, this card is going to do something good and actually get rid of a spell. And even if it does do that, it's not that good. Because Slythe in the Darkness Sieve, two for, or three for 2,000, top deck into discard, is a hell of a lot better than a 25% chance of a discard. And anyway, that's if it's a spell. If it's a creature, your opponent picks it back up. You just plus one your opponent. So think about this. Swing with Forklift. He... Gets rid of it, or he flips his card, throws in discard. It's Hydra Medusa. On his turn, he draws a Giga Bulver. You know he can combo those, kill something big, then swing with Medusa and chop this guy up to bits. This card, like I said, borderline useless. Almost should have never been put in print. I don't know anybody who's running it. I don't know why they would. Uh, one star. That's that's all it's getting for me. I Look hate it. it. Look at the hate passion. It. Hate it. The intensity of a thousand burning suns. Even okay. Even if you get rid of a terror pit, you know, I don't. <laughs> it's it's bad. It's a horrible card. Bad juju. Yeah, it's a horrible card. A lot of times, I don't play terror pit from the hand. If I get it in shields, it gets played. But if I pick it up. Unless it's late, late game, it goes into mana. I'm, I run a mono dark, so those big spells don't go from my hand anyway. I mean, it, it would hurt if on turn 7 it swung and got rid of a terror pit. But, I mean, by that time, I've got a lot of app options out there already. I've got a lot of field presence. I've got some slayers down. And, you know, the thing gets blocked by Skeeter Swarmer. It, it's lacking in every... <laughs> Forklift Tank Blue Urgle is lacking in every department that it could lack in. That's, that's all I'm I didn't saying. even think about that. That's, it's that's it's funny. horrible. That, wouldn't it be awful if you drop a Forklift Tank? First of all, nobody would ever do this because its effect works for the opponent. But say 
you drop a forklift tank, you swing, or like, and then on their turn, they play Veil Vortex, you just wasted your turn. <laughs> but the card is so bad that they would not do that. They want you to attack with that card so you can give them draw. That card is awful. Continuing on. <laughs> Sorry about that four and a half minute rant, guys. I just, I wanted you to know. <laughs> well, try to, to understand me. Orange plunge. <laughs> Drink of Kaijudo Doodles everywhere. Product placement. <laughs> Alright, uh, this next one we have. We just finished all the monsters and the, and the water sift for Evo. Uh, we're moving on to our spells. We only have two for you, both of which are shield blasts. Um, this first one is Search the Depths. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with it. It is a shield blast. Um, whenever the shield is broken or whenever you cast it, you search, you, you look through the top four cards of your deck, you pull one of them, and you put the other three on the bottom of the deck. Uh, for me, this is a card you can do with or without. I mean, it has its advantages, has its, has its disadvantages. Um, I just say three stars. Uh, granted, it is a shield blast, so that's cool. You ain't got to waste mana by spending it from your hand. Um, I mean, it helps you search through your deck, which is basically like Breach the Veil. So if you're looking for an Evo, this guy would be pretty good. Um, uh, for me, uh, I'm, giving it, I'm giving the guy three stars. It's not bad, but it's not awesome. Um, Reef Prince Glue Hurdle, 5 cost, 2,000 power, does the exact same effect, I think. Don't quote me on it. But, um, you know, it is a shield blast. It does have that going for it. But Breach the Veil is better. It's 3 cost, just like this one. It's nature, not water. So, if you're not running nature, it doesn't do you any good. But, um, <laughs> it's... It's a three cost, and you search down four cards. Breach allows you to search five. Yeah, your opponent gets to see it, but if you're playing it next, or if you're playing it next turn, and they broke this as a shield, it doesn't really matter, now does it? Uh, you can pull spells with this one. Breach, you can only pull monsters. Monsters, yeah. But overall, I'm gonna give this thing two stars. It's half a logo scan. You get one card, you go two more deeper, but you only get one card. And who's to say you don't pull two Neuron, or, or you know, a Veil Vortex and something else good, and have to choose between the two. Um, and on turn three, you shouldn't be deck searching with a purpose. On turn three, if you're wanting to get some draw in, you want Logos. So, uh, you know, we've got better cards for searching in this fashion already. Uh, out of water, I expect better. Maybe if it was a two drop, okay. Um, but as, as of now, search the depths, two stars. It's great in sealed. I saw a lot of people playing it in sealed, you know, in Evo Fury drafts. But, you know, in constructed, in worth anything, two stars. Alright, the next one up is another Shield Blast card. It is a tap 6 and known as Aqu uh, Aquatic Expulsion. Alright, this bad boy is a Shield Blast. Basically what its effect is, is, one, is you target up to fucking foot... Sorry, I'm putting my leg up from now on. Whenever the shield's broken, you can tap... Tap, fuck me. Yeah, up to two... Ta bounce. Thank you. Bounce. You can bounce up to two target enemy creatures that are level... What is it, two or three? Three. That are level two. Is it two? Two. No, level three or less. Oh, that's yeah. two. <laughs> <laughs> I, if it was level two or less, my rating just dropped. <laughs> but basically, you can turn up to two level three or less. I got the numbers confused. <laughs> you can turn up to two level three or less from the field up back to the back to their hand. Um, before Evo Fury. This card probably wouldn't really be worth two shits worth the piss, other swears that I can't think of. But, now that there is, now with Evo Fury, well, granted this came with Evo, anyway, my fucking point is this. Normally this card would be ineffective, alright? Really, it re really wouldn't fucking matter. Cause, because it's tap six, by turn six, the guy's already gonna have Evos out, guarantee, practically a guarantee, if they're running him. If not, then, okay, cool, you can get rid of some small shit, like, uh, uh, 
something, Spider Skeeter Swarmer. Or, yeah, you can get rid of a Skeeter. Or a Gigastan or, or something. Skull Cutter. Yeah, alright, but basically, normally I'd probably rate this guy like a 2 or a 3, but the fact of the matter is this. I know uh, Laser Arm Dragon, or Dra Dra Dracon, Dracon from there and here, is a level 3. Mm. I know that uh, Emperor Neuron is a level 3. Uh, basically, basically, this thing can bounce Evos, and when you're doing that, you're not bouncing one card, you're bouncing two. You're bouncing quite a bit of mana, yeah. you know? So, basically, this guy actually does have his uses. Granted, it's only situational, because I think only the only three Evos are Laser Arm and Neuron. Yeah, that it hits. Yeah. So, at turn six, you're not... And, unless you got to strike a... a, stri a no, god damn it. Just shove your arm up my ass so, I, so you can make me talk. But, um... <laughs> at first, I, was questioning, I was questioning where that was going. Alright, by turn six, getting rid of bait is going to be pointless. Unless you've had a streak of good luck and the guy just can't seem to pull out a fucking uh, Evo. However, if you're facing a water or a fire deck or anything that has those in them that you know they have Evos in... This guy might be useful, but seeing as how that's situational, that's obviously going to affect its rating. Um, for me, normally I'd rate him probably two stars, but because I just now thought of that Evo thing and pulled it out of my ass, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give this thing a three cost, because granted it might be very situational, but at that same time so is Return to the Soil, and that has caused me to lose the match more than one time. Um... I'm out of orange stuff. I got my orange stuff. You keep your orange stuff. Fine. I don't want very cooties. Uh, Aquatic Expulsion. Uh, first of all, I love the card art, you know, the Cyber Lord dragging the pigs by chains. I thought that that was kind of funny. I really like that. <laughs> um, shield Blast makes it much more useful. If it wasn't a Shield Blast, I would rate it a hell of a lot lower. Um, return, as he said... Two target creatures, level three or less, from the battle zone to your owner's hands. Uh, you can bounce your stuff as well if you need to. I don't really, I can't, not off the top of my head, I can't think of any... Fumes. Well... Ah, uh, he's you, four. Yeah, he's four. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head of your own that you might want to bounce, but this is, you know... Oh, that would go off the whole, uh... The uh, cyber trader. And yeah, shit like neuron, that. yeah. That's um, what bad students to help you cycle through your deck. Uh, shit, I though. would say, yeah, I'm gonna give this three stars right now as a shield blast. You know, more times than not, it's gonna be played from the shield zone. I don't see it coming from the hand a lot because by turn six, you know, if they have two creatures out. Uh, I'm going to guarantee that one of them is too high for you to bounce. So, uh, in that sense, I think you're better off, um, I think you're better off ice blading something. Because you, I know, it's one less card to ice blade in Veil Vortex, you know, like, but, uh, you know, if you've got six mana and you're wanting to bounce two creatures, you're probably going to, you know, use two ice blades. Or something like that. Um, from the hand, this thing's, you know, it's a little bit high priced. Not going to see a whole lot of play from the hand. At least I don't think so. Uh, from the shields, very much, you know, uh, it's amazing for anti-rush, you know. Um, you know, they, they've they got Cliff Cutter and they just evolved a Jet Flame Bodyguard. They swing with Laser Arm. Laser arm breaks two shields. One of them is this one. Everything goes back, and you know there you are, turn three, you know ready to start putting your pressure on. Um, if if you could remove level fours, which I don't think would break this card, if it was basically two ice blades. No oh, shit. I Especially don't. Yeah, six. yeah. With six cost, I don't think that would break this card at all. Um, right now I'm going to give it three stars, but, you know, they could have done better with it. I think it's a little underpowered. That's all we got. Yeah, that's all for the water sieve. Uh, stay tuned. Next we're hitting up Darkness, personal favorite, represent. Um, <laughs> <laughs>
But, uh, you know, until next time, keep playing, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, see ya.